Shalom. Salam. In the previous segment, we talked about not being conformed to this world system. What it means to separate your heart and mind from the world system. And this further training of basic discipleship and the renewal of our mind. Continue in this basic training of discipleship. The last two or three segments, we've been discussing the fall of mankind. And last time we kind of jumped ahead to present times and moved backwards. But this time we're going to start in the beginning to the original Tower of Babel and move forward through world event, more so highlighting the concept of the antichrist spirit in the book of daniel and his prophecy interpreting king nebuchadnezzar's dream the king of babylonia in that time of ancient phoenicia the uh, head of gold symbolizing his empire of ancient babylon the breastplate of silver symbolizing ancient persia greece and of course the unholy roman empire and that dynasty of babylon and the fall of rome legs or the legs of iron eventually fall into that nation of fragmentation that we know of today as mystery babylon right here in the western hemisphere and the interpretation of that great stone that fell from the sky smashing all the hairs of babylonia and resurrecting yahweh's kingdom upon earth that is mount zion and it's possible this pre-antichrist spirit or anti-hebraic spirit which of course is of you know satanic spirits and demonic forces upon the earth of the of the true enemy the adversary but this pre-antichrist spirit goes back to even you could say the time of egypt uh, the rule of uh pharaoh and the so-called egyptians in that ancient land of egypt going back to Exodus with the slavery and oppression of the original Hebrew Israelites in that time and then fast forward to the actual literal Exodus of the Israelites and the Most High Yahweh Jah saving his chosen people from the oppression of Pharaoh and the so-called Egyptians in that time the actual Passover and witnessing the parting of the Red Sea um, the ten plagues of Egypt and eventually Moses ascending to Mount Sinai where he received the original ten decadence or the ten commandments to give to his people Israel when Moses came down from Mount Sinai the first time he was a little disappointed see a certain portion of unfaithful Israelite that cast in their gold jewelry in the formation of a golden calf they use for idol worship. It's a clear example of a pre-antichrist spirit. Say what? Spirit. Fast forward to the time of King David. Even when David was anointed by the prophet Samuel, there was the reign of King Saul. You know, he'd already messed up and that, that covenant on him as being the king of Israel was already taken away. You know, David was already anointed to be the next true king of Israel. <clears throat> However, that was kind of a pre-anti-Hebraic or anti-Semitic, as some would say, or even anti-Christ. Kind of a pre-anti-Christ spirit that took place before Yeshua, the Messiah, before Christ in the first advent. Um, 
you know, King Saul, you know, both being, you know, Hebrew Israelites and, you know, David also being a Yehudaite from the tribe of, of Judah. But, you know, King Saul trying to eliminate David through this uh, unclean spirit or a demonic spirit of jealousy or hatred, uh, that in itself, you know, trying to be the king when he was already knocked off from being the king of Israel. You know, King Saul was trying to hold on to his pride and to his issues. Even as a fellow, you know, Israelite of blood, he was still succumbed to that pre-Antichrist spirit. And all the uh, unfaithful kings after David and even Solomon, even Solomon himself kind of going astray for a little while. And then you know, eventually through his repentance and, you know, his marriage with, the Queen Magda, the Queen of Sheba, and their son Menelik rightfully taking the original Ark of the Covenant with the original Ten Commandments and fleeing to Ethiopia from the ancient traditional promised land of Israel to Ethiopia. Therefore, the kings are that dynasty of kings left behind in the traditional promised land in Israel. Um kind of went back and forth. If you read the Old Testament, there was a faithful king who was righteous and kept Yahweh's commandments, led the majority of the people of Israel and of Judah to keep the commandments. Keeping that, you know, keep in mind at that time there was a separation of Israel and Judah or the kingdom of Yehuda in that time, even after the exile of Menelik and, and you know Solomon and the Queen of Sheba through Menelik. And those faithful Hebrew Israelites who repented of their ways and turned back to Yahweh's commandments. <clears throat> but eventually, that lineage of kings in Israel uh, and in Judah kind of went back and forth. There was a righteous king, there was an unrighteous king who began to go astray to false idols, you know, to ways of the pagan nations, eventually leading the whole nation astray. All except those faithful Yehudaites and Israelites that repented, that actually listened to the messengers and the prophets of ancient Israel and made that, that true exodus, that second exodus from ancient Israel to the roots of creation, going back to Ethiopia, you know, and Mother Africa. But there were some, you know, faithful Israelites who, you know, kept the faith but stayed behind. They were caught up in the aftermath of the first and second exile. Well, fast forward through time, there's still this pre-Antichrist spirit taking place before Christ, or before the true Messiah in that first advent through Jesus Christos or Yehoshua HaMashiach. Eventually, uh, the time was up, you know, there was enough messengers and witnesses and, and, and true prophets of Israel that warned their own people. And then the majority of unfaithful Israelites and Yehudaites took over. Eventually you had the uh, invasion of ancient Babylonia and the ancient promised land. And there was the captivity of the northern kingdom in Israel, 722 BC. Also the second captivity or second exile of Yehuda and of uh, um, 586 around 586 BC and we fast forward to after the return of the second Yehudaite or Jewish exiles that we know today of more of the Hebrew speaking you know Jewish people today the Eurocentric you know Jewish people today of true uh, you know Sephardic uh, Yemenite bloodlines um, were brought back into Jerusalem, into that ancient promised land. And then you had the rise, the actual rise of the pre-Antichrist himself from the reign of ancient Greece and that unholy empire that ruled over that territory. <clears throat>